Hello, I'm here today to try to demystify a little bit what is going on in Ukraine about this military status or martial law. I do not want to make a judgment, I just want to provide you with an insider perspective and also uh, let you know about facts. So for us to make a judgment, always we need to have both sides of the equation. And uh, I will not discuss who is right, who is wrong. I will just provide you the facts as far as I can understand and uh, lead you to make your own conclusions and understand what will be the reason for you to visit Ukraine or not. Because lately many people start to put questions, oh, it's not safe to go to Ukraine, the war, this and that. So we are living this for more than four years. So I just would like to illustrate the actual situation and uh, make you, as I said before, understand the facts by your own judgment. So we should start and I will provide below all the links that sustain my statements. And uh, we would start, for example, to understand what the law says about martial law in Ukraine. So below you can find a link that explains exactly all the law, the full text of the law about uh, martial law. And uh, I will call attention only for some of the points of the, uh, their articles and those that I believe are interesting for you. So as by definition, and uh, I will read the text uh, as it says the law, uh, this law defines the content of the legal regime of the martial law, the producer for its introduction and abolition, the legal basis for the activities of state authorities, military command, military administration, local authorities, enterprises, institutions and organizations in the conditions of martial law, guarantees of human and civil rights and freedoms and rights and legitimate interests of the legal entities. So the first article, the definition of the martial law, and I will not say it all till the end, but the most important of it, a military state is a special legal regime introduced in Ukraine or in separate areas in the event of armed aggression or threat of attack, the danger of Ukraine's state independence, its territorial integrity. So on this first uh, paragraph of the law, the article number one, it explains clear when should a martial law be put into practice. Then other the points on the law, like the termination and abolition of the military status is something that also the law says the following. A military state in the whole territory of Ukraine or in the separate areas shall be terminated after the expiration of the term of which it was introduced. I recall that our President Poroshenko put the actual martial law lasting for 30 days. We will understand if at the end this will be postponed by reasons covered by the law or any others that can meanwhile appear. On the second paragraph of this article 7, it says that prior to expire, expiration of the term of which a state of war was introduced and subject to the elimination of the threat of an attack or threat to the state independence of Ukraine. So this short saying, when there is no more threatens, when there are no more attacks, then the law gathered the conditions to be executed and terminate. So this is between you and me for four years, this doesn't exist. This law was not never in practice only till now. And at the end, maybe we'll understand a little bit more why now. So the other one that may be interesting for those that come here is the article number eight that say that measures of the legal regime of the military state. It says that the president of Ukraine on the introduction of martial law, such measures of the legal regime military status. And then on the point six of this uh, article number eight, 
we have here saying establish a special regime of entry and exit, restrict the freedom of movements of citizens, foreigners and stateless persons, as well as the movements of vehicles. The point seven, check documents from individuals and, if necessary, inspect things, vehicles, luggage and cargo, office premises and citizens' homes, except restrictions established by the Constitution of Ukraine. And by last, the number eight, to prohibit the holding of peaceful gatherings, rallies, campaigns and demonstrations, other mass events. The 10 say to establish a prohibition of restrictions on the choice of place of residence or place of residence of persons in the territory where the military states operates. Uh, long story short, how this applies to us, foreigners like me, uh, if I would be applying for a residence in Ukraine and my interest would be on reside on one of these 10 areas that are now considering on the state of martial law, uh, it is not possible. But it is possible for you and me to keep on circulating, coming here with uh, some added measures. And I can tell you that so far on the local media, we have information about four Russian citizens that they were prevented to enter the borders of Ukraine for the simple reason that they could not justify the purpose of the visit. I do not know this in details, but this is information that goes to the media. So between before martial law be implemented and now, we had on this huge thousands of tra daily traffic of people coming in and out. We have four persons, so they say that there's no big uh, changing in terms of the day-to-day -day life in Ukraine. Uh, I would like also to share with you the article number 10 that explains that inadmissibility of termination of powers of bodies of state power, other state bodies in conditions of martial law. This has to be with political things, this has to be with the actual, maybe people speculate, maybe right, maybe wrong. Uh, next year we have presidential elections, so going on the situation of martial law, obviously all this will be postponed and postponed based once again on what the law says. And I once again explain on the point number one of this article 10, it says that during the period of martial law, the powers of the president of Ukraine, the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine, the cabinet of ministers of Ukraine, commissioners of Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine for human rights, as well as the courts, prosecutors, offices of Ukraine, bodies conducting operational search activity, pre-trial investigation, and bodies whose units carry on counterintelligence activities. Article 11, activity of the President of Ukraine in conditions of martial law. The point number two says that in the event of the termination of the term of office of the President of Ukraine during the military state, his powers shall continue until the newly elected President of Ukraine elected after the abolition of the martial law. So this clearly says that during martial law, there's no changings on the political sphere. There's no uh, ab abolition of powers from the president, from the government, from the courts, from the investigation identities. So, and on the number three, we have the powers of the president of Ukraine stipulated by the constitution of Ukraine in conditions of martial law cannot be limited. This is what the law says. So we are trying to define here the, the panoramic of the actual political situation of Ukraine versus what is this incident. Because comparing to our problems with fights since four years, this is not more than a very small incident and this please on my own personal opinion. So I would like to also add one more information that has to be with the Article 21 of the same law of martial legal status of foreigners, stateless persons and legal entities of foreign states in the conditions of martial law. So this have to be with us foreigners here. The point number one says that the legal status of foreigners 
and stateless persons, legal entities of foreign states who are on the territory of Ukraine during the martial law is determined by the constitution and laws of Ukraine, international agreements of Ukraine, the consent of which is binding on the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine. Long story short, uh, nothing changed for our freedom of moving back and forth in Ukraine. It doesn't affect unless there are any criminal reasons, investigation going on or something that would make us to be, by the local Ukrainian law, a persona non grata for the safety of the country. So, me and you, people that come here to visit, to date, uh, they are far uh, included on such uh, situation. So, this was the law. And now I would like to call your attention to why this law now is so much spoke about and why so much important other incidents that are in Ukraine going on since four years were never faced this way. This is just a friendly conversation between friends to provide you the information and to help you to build your own opinion about Ukraine and also understand if it, it is or not dangerous to come to Ukraine, that on my personal opinion, obviously it is not at all. So I remind you, for example, this loss, this, uh, sorry, this uh, fights, these battles, we have at least, and I had the care to take note about all this, and I will provide you also the links, and I'm based on Wikipedia, so it's a very confirmed situation and very modest, never referring the exact numbers because the real numbers are much higher. I can, for example, advance you that we had till uh, last year, 2017, as we can read uh, information on Wikipedia, we had soldiers, 1,023 killed among 18 main battles, as they call and explain one by one. And after we add all these battles, the casualties, the disappeared people, the injured people, the citizens, the police uh, officers, the uh, status of the government entities that were killed, we reached this number of 1,023. And we have captured people, we reached 327, we had um, civilians killed, 85 civilians on the last four years, and we have 239 missing people. So, uh, this is far much more serious, much more important than this conflict in Azov Sea that is, once again, a bubble that can become big, cannot. But if we look to the past, we understand that much worse than this happened and nothing changed our free circulation and nothing also unfortunately changed the reality of the country. But for us, once again, foreigners, and this is why is this video for, uh, it still does not affect us. And uh, I also could mention the fact that after the big battle in Ilovaisky that died 366 soldiers, a month later was the serv this famous case about the Boeing 777 from the Malaysian Airlines where it died 283 people at this time and all these events going on we didn't have any martial law and uh, why it's really something for you to conclude because for another example and based on information on the local media we have here that goodbye ATO. ATO is anti-terroristic uh, operation that in Ukraine is called since ever. Uh, Ukraine never called Russia the enemy. They called the terrorists, they called the invasors, they called occupants, but they never declared Russia as a country in war with Ukraine. So, uh, in the beginning of this year, in February, and I quote, is still not a war, but uh, maybe it's progress. Ukraine formally dropped its anti-terrorist operation misnomer or ATO in describing Russia as a, against Ukrainians since 2014. 
but the nation's leaders still can bring themselves to official declare as war the Kremlin's military invasion that has killed more than, and he says, 10,000 people and cost Ukraine control of Crimean Peninsula parts of the eastern Donbass. Instead, Ukraine, Petr Poroshenko, our president, in February 20, signed into a law that uh, controversial Donbass integration legislation and renames the conflict as taking measures to ensure national security and defense and repulsing and deterring the armed aggression of Russian Federation in Donetsk and Lugansk Oblast. It's like armed aggression. And this was approved by the Verkona Rada in January 18 with 280 votes. So this said, all this happened. All these thousands of people die, people disappear, civilians are killed. Uh, territory of Ukraine were taken by Russia and still we are not in war. Now came this episode with Azov Sea. And there are is true agreements between Russia and Ukraine because we need, we, and when I say need, <laughs> Ukraine's so many years here, I already called myself a little bit Ukrainian. They need to cross this strait of uh, uh, Kirsch to connect between one part of Ukraine and the other. Now the Russians take part of it, control it, and this is where was built this famous bridge that connect Crimea taken from Ukraine to Russia. So Russians can, by land, have Crimea connected with uh, Russia. My question here and my thoughts that I share with you have to be that we most likely, we all were in the military, so we know that any commanders do not take self-enterprise decisions, especially when we are crossing waters that are not defined to belong to Ukraine or to belong to Russia. We are in a conflict. So if I would be the commander of any boat, any ship or special warship, before I stubborn try to pass, I would be really sure that my government, my country spoke with Russia and Russia said these boats can pass. And this is the reason that led me to believe that why did these three boats insist to pass? I would only insist if I would be sure that I was within the law. But the fact is that for misleading information, lack of information, lack of comprehension. I don't know, and I will not judge what I said before. These boats came back. These boats came back to Odessa, and the way on the way back is when this incident and these 24 sailors were taken and arrested. Let's see the panoramic on this area, for example and based also once again in information that I provide you. Why would the ant provoke the elephant? Because this is the reality. And when you see what is going in terms of the weaponry that Russia have and the weaponry that Ukraine has, it, it is absurd, it's the, it's the ant and, uh, and the elephant. We can see that on the Black Sea, the military imbalance is huge. When you see that Ukraine has one frigate, one mid-sized landing ship, one missile boat, one miss whipper, and uh, 12 small craft patrol boats. This is an end comparing to Russian Black Sea fleet that has one guided missile cruise, one guided missile destroyer, five guided missile frigates, five missile boats, seven attack submarines, seven landing ships, eight uh, minesweepers boats, and 11 guided missile convict, ASW convict. Really? Why would I on my small boat provoke these people if I would not do it on consciousness that I'm not breaking any law? So. This detail stays for you to judge by yourself. So this, unfortunately, 24 
sailors uh, are arrested for two months they were judged. You can read the news about this below. Now come international community because all this also <coughs> sorry, all this is nothing more than an appealing to international community once again to do something because really thousands of dead people, four years of war, uh, where did we see strongly international community do something? Uh, now we can read. US says it has conducted extraordinary flight over Ukraine in a warning to Russia. The United States has said it has conducted an extraordinary flight over Ukraine amid escalating tensions between Kiev and Moscow. The other news say, and all these news, I tell you, they have hours from today, the, 12, the 7th of December 2018. US prepares to sail warship into Black Sea amid Ukraine-Russia clash near Crimea. The United States is preparing to send a warship into the Black Sea in response to Russia's seizure of Ukraine vessels and sailors, a decision that could lead to further heightened tensions in the region. Uh, really? Why, why these people are destabilizing each time more? And these people, I'm not saying United States, I'm not saying Russia, I'm not saying Ukraine. I'm saying that everything that is going on is behind our comprehension. And uh, because, once again, for us, it's important to know, as individual persons, foreigners, come here in and out. Uh, and fortunately for us, unfortunately for the locals, nothing changed. There's no dangers, the flights coming in and out. People are not uh, uh, void to enter the country. There's no special measures that you can see on the streets. There's nothing going on that may cause you fear for your life or thinking that if you fly to Ukraine, you fly to a country that is in war and that any moment can fall a bomb on your head. <laughs> I'm here since 2005. I passed my then revolution in these wars. I was there taping with my phone. I covered for people information in detail and uh, nothing happened. People die. It happened every day. We can die even crossing the road in our safe uh, neighborhood. So long story short, I hope that this helped you to understand and to make your own conclusions. And believe me, uh, Ukraine is safe to travel, to make a tourism, to find your wife, if that will be your intention. Because as we say in our, uh, our military and on the United States military, we say the same, is like the, the fortune favors the braves. So uh, women here, they are longing for the brave men. They are longing for people that will be willing to come no matter what. People that have a goal in mind and is not because of political instability or because it's minus 10 outside that uh, the suitable right good men will avoid to come to Ukraine. So maybe those that come are the audacious ones that will be protected by fortune. And I leave you with a very small example that what is Ukrainian people, and on this case, the Ukrainian women. When a man gets sick, a husband in the family hold, in percentage, 20% of the men abandon the wife, but only 2% of the Ukrainian women abandon the husband. And this say a lot. So, show your value and do not fear to come here because there is nothing going on that affects your safetyness. It's just going on our exhaustive forever and ever politics mixed with war. A dangerous game, but 
as the last four years said and show it didn't happen before, it will not happen now. Thank you for listening and good luck.